But I wanted to go back to AI for a second mm -hmm. and just how economists are thinking about the role of AI. Before we started the podcast, I asked you a question and you wrote an answer and you haven't shown me the answer yet. But I asked you, um, can AI fix the economy? So I'm wondering if you could show me your answer yeah. now. And you, First of all, you feel bad for my students because they have to read this handwriting. <laughs> okay. But I wrote, uh, it's up to us. It's up to us. And basically what I mean by that, what I mean by that is really parroting a wonderful book mm. called Power and Progress by my colleagues, my Nobel Prize winning colleagues, Dorn Asimoglu and Simon Johnson. They talk about through the whole history of technology that technology can always be used for good or for bad. And really it's up to us to direct it, mm -hmm. to decide which direction it's gonna go in. Mm -hmm. So I often ask this question, which is, I feel like social media has led to very many terrible, terrible outcomes in our society. And I often think 25 years ago, if we knew what we know now, what would we have done differently? with social media, what could we have done differently? I don't really know the answer. But I feel like that's a conversation we, we should be having now about AI. We shouldn't get behind. We know bad things are gonna come out of AI. We know good things are gonna come, come out of AI, just like bad and good things that come with social media. We need to be getting ahead of the bad things in a way we didn't with social media. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us how AI is gonna affect the economy and how it's gonna affect life. Mm -hmm. It's up to whether we establish the proper regulatory frameworks and the proper way of thinking about it so that we can deal with the negative effects while capturing the positive effects. Yeah, so it's sort of like the bowling analogy that you used. Yeah. We need the gutters full Yeah, <laughs> a little we, bit. We, we, we need some gutter guards. We need some gutter guards. Like when you bowl with your little kid and you got the gutter guards. Yeah. We need some gutter guards to allow the ball to rock around the alley, but so we don't go in the gutters, which way could be existential destruction mm -hmm. rather than a ball in the alley. But the bottom line is we have lots of hard questions that this is raising but it's still early days. I know it's moving fast, but it's still early days. I guess I'm not optimistic that I see people engaging with, with these hard questions in a constructive way. And I feel like we need, we need disinterested people, expert people who aren't there to make a buck out of it to really start thinking hard about these things. Um, you said in one of your lectures, maybe about two years ago, which was like pre where we are now with AI. Yeah, very much. <laughs> you said, um, and I'll read you the quote, um, any government, no matter how large and how benevolent, cannot make the enormous, massive quantity of billions and billions of decisions that need to be made. Think about every good we consume in America, a government deciding how much of it to make and literally who gets it. It's overwhelming. This is, you know, this is from my introductory lecture to the class mm -hmm. where I talk about the fundamental nature of capitalism. Capitalism has a bad name uh, right now in many circles, but mm -hmm. let's remember that what capitalism is essentially about letting the market, the invisible hand of the market, make those billions of decisions. Mm. The opposite is a, what we call a command economy, which is often in communist societies, which is where the government would make those decisions. I don't really see AI making it feasible to have a command economy because ultimately that's about people's preferences and things. Mm. I, I think AI comes to our earlier conversation. AI is gonna really match people more with exactly the goods they want and need and match the production of that. And then the question is who benefits from that? Mm -hmm. I'd like to think there's a world where consumers benefit where they get goods they wouldn't have otherwise gotten at prices below what they were willing to pay and get some surplus from that. But that might not happen. Like I said, you know, and like uh, Jerome Simon's book hi highlights, technological advancement is a choice. We may instead end up in a world where consumers get exploited and a few monopolists get very rich and that would be a bad outcome indeed. Mm -hmm.